Yeah. Okay. Yes, I, I have successfully uploaded my slide. Okay, I'd like to have a uh, present and discuss the uh, new technology introduced in Hacilico's uh, latest Quantum Server, uh, which is called the uh, Integrated PCI Monitor and Tracing Facilities. Uh, rather, uh, something rather specific to the PCIe staffs. Uh, I'd like to uh, start this in the following aspects. Uh, the first one I'd like to introduce, uh, introduce for why we have these facilities and uh, then uh, overall view for the PCIe PMU and the usage. Uh, then is an introduction for the PTP and the usage. Uh, then I'd like to speak something about the potential scenarios for this, we assume. And uh, some open questions I'd like to discuss and seek for suggestions and co comments. Uh, like something, uh, how can we make it more helpful to both software and hardware developers and get more people involved? So we, uh, we have some, have some questions why we need this. The first, uh, the first thing is why we need this. Uh, since we are currently lack for some, or we are have limited PCI ink, uh, analyzing and tuning method. Uh, we have uh, some various tools for monitoring and tracing the CPUs, uh, but almost none for peripherals, especially for PCIe's, uh, which is current lack for now, like something to better monitor the link status and the profiling the util uh, utilizations for the PCIe. There is a limited method for debugging PCIe link. Uh, the common PCIe analyzer is expensive, complex, invasive, and uh, sometimes hard to start, set up. Then if the performance is not optimized since we deploy some the same configurations for all the cases, uh, like buffer allocations, but, uh, it is unchanged after putting up uh, for all the scenarios, uh, but the different IO applications or on different stage of the same applications may vary. Uh, they may get uh, different performance uh, when we change these configurations. And how do we uh, try to solve this? So we introduced integrated monitor and tracing facilities. Uh, we have implemented two PCIe IEPs on our newest SOC, uh, which is called uh, PMU and uh, PTP. Uh, with all of this, we, we will be able to further improve the monitor uh, and the profiling abilities for our SOC. Since we have, have already have on-call PMUs for DDR interactions and etc., cetera, uh, this time we bring it uh, to the peripherals like uh, PCIe, PMU. Then we bring a lightweighted PCIe analyzer-like tracing facilities for tracing and recording the TLP headers. Uh, it is embedded in our controller. So this will ease and improve the PCIe analyzing at the package level. Uh, it will be more convenient, quick to set up and free since it's embedded. You do not need uh, additional setup. Uh, then we have one experimental, but a creative feature. That is, we provide the interface for tuning the PCI link configuration dynam dynamically at the wrong time, uh, make it possible to optimize the performance according to the scenarios and uh, applications. Then I'd, I'd like to uh, have uh, introduce of the PCI monitoring unit and the usage. So the left figure shows that uh, the composition of the our root complex is look like it is composed of several uh, components, uh, several root port and uh, several endpoint. Uh, each root port and the endpoint are com composed in one PCIe core. Uh, on which PCI uh, on every PCIe core we have one PTT device and one PMU device responsible for monitoring the link activities on the core it locates. So uh, the link activities and the utilizations are denoted as different uh, link event. So we have several counters for monitoring such link event that, uh, like uh, bandwidth, latency, and uh, past utilizations and the buffer uh, 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 occurrence. The PMU also supported the two uh, statistics these counters uh, conditionally. Uh, we can decide, the users can decide to filter the statistic uh, either by the certain uh, package length uh, or 
the event from certain root port or the end point. So the usage is rather simple. Uh, we can use uh, the monitoring can be configured and started using the general perf tools, which is rather general in the Linux. So the support for the perf tool is also uh, is also appear in the main line. Uh, the use is rather simple. You can start the uh, monitoring uh, by by the perfed command. Uh, several uh, several process you need to make. The first one is to specify the PMU device you'd like to use. Uh, like this, the has PCIe zero call two. Uh, you should use the device where you need to trace in your uh, link event. Uh, for example, you like to trace in the root port uh, zero, uh, and uh, the root port zero is monitored by the by this PMU device. You, su you should specify it uh, correctly. Then you need to specify the event you'd like to monitor, uh, which is called the link event in this uh, command line. Uh, we exposed several link events like uh, uh, memory read count. Okay, how many read, uh, memory read uh, uh, performed and uh, how many uh, dword of the memory read we have performed on both directions, inbound or outbound, and uh, something like the latency of each memory read or memory write, uh, memory write packets. Uh, then you can specify the, uh, the filters, uh, which means you can filter the event you'd like to uh, monitor uh, from either root port or from either, uh, from uh, one certain endpoint. You, you need to specify the target filters. Uh, it re, uh, accept uh, two uh, commands. Uh, one is a port, or you, you, you can specify the BDF, uh, which means the endpoint BDF you'd like to uh, monitor. Uh, another uh, two command is uh, provided for you to uh, filter the copy packets. Uh, a link event you'd like to uh, start the trace or only the event you'd like to trace, uh, you'd like to monitor. Uh, one is called the uh, trigger filter, uh, which means you can trigger when the certain TLP uh, event, uh, when a certain TLP length is match your uh, expectation. Uh, for example, if you specify the uh, trigger mode as zero and you specify the one trigger length as n, uh, then when the first uh, TLP packet length is greater than the ND word, will start the trace. And that's in, uh, then is the threshold filter. Uh, you can only monitor statistic the event of certain length of TLP. Uh, below figure is provide a example. Uh, in this example, we're monitoring the memory read uh, packets the total memory data length uh, of the inbound directions for 10 seconds under the port zero, uh, under the port one. Uh, a network car is mounted under this port and during the period it is performing the IPER process. Uh, we can see that we, we have uh, around 6,000 counts of this event, uh, which means uh, we, have three, uh, we have monitored in that uh, 6,000 uh, 6, counts uh, TLP packets that is match the filter we specified. Okay, that is for the uh, PMU uh, side. Another uh, another IEP we introduced is the PCIe two and the trace device. Uh, like to the okay, somebody is going to ask. Oh no. So oh, like to the PMU device, we have one PDD device for each call responsible for tracing and monitoring the tracing and tuning the PCIe link on the call it uh, locates. Uh, it has two functions. One is for tracing the TLP packet. Uh, we only uh, record the TLP header. Uh, for the, it can be side to trace for the TLPs downstream the certain root port or of certain requester ID, uh, which means from the certain endpoint of the root port. Uh, which matches the requester ID we cite, and also can be filtered by the uh, certain type. We can choose to trace only the packets uh, of posted uh, TLP or non-posted TLP or completions or all of them or both. Uh, 
Uh, another thing is that we can filter the TLP trace by the certain directions, uh, inbound or outbound. Uh, another feature uh, besides the TLP tracer is the dynamically tuning the link configurations of the PCIe core. So we export the PCIe link uh, we link, uh, export the PCIe link configurations to the users by the device. Then the users can use this to tune the link configurations at runtime after the system is put up. So the usage uh, for the PPT trace is uh, similar to the PMU. It is also uh, we also make use of the uh, Linux Perf two. Uh, we can start the trace by uh, simply uh, specify the perf command, uh, perf record command, with specifying the target PPT device uh, filters, TLP types, and the directions and the desired data format. Uh, no other configurations or setup from the hardware is needed. You just uh, put up the system, and uh, if you want to trace the TLPs from the certain link, you just uh, use the uh, load the driver and uh, start the trace by the Perf command. So when started a trace, you need to, uh, the first thing is to specify the filter, which means the source of the TLPs uh, you'd like to trace. It's the first command in this example. Uh, you can specify the filters by, uh, you can specify the root port of the TLPs, uh, which, which we can uh, filter the source of the TLP packet. Uh, then you can uh, choose the desired TLP types, uh, like posted TLPs, non-posted TLPs, or all. Or completions, yeah. Uh, then is the directions. Just uh, just uh, specify the option directions for the desired TLP directions you would like to trace, uh, either inbound, outbound, or both. Uh, the last one, the last option is the format. Uh, it is something uh, related to the headers storage. Uh, we provide two uh, formats of the traced TLP headers. One is 4D word, another is 8D word. So unlikely to the PMU counters, uh, the, we need additional support for the perf tools to enable this, this, faction, this function. The patches of the perf tools board is, uh, are still under reviewing on the line. So uh, when we get the twisted data, uh, the users can use the, also use the perf tools to do the data display. So this slide shows that the raw data formats look like and what users will get uh, from the perf tools. Uh, the, left, uh, the left two figures uh, shows the raw data format, uh, which, means the direct, uh, which means the TLP headers directly traced by the uh, PDD device and uh, stored in the memory. So one is a 4DW, uh, is 4D word format and an another is 8D uh, word format. So the AD word format trace and stores the whole headers with some additional information. So it will certainly consume more memory. Uh, for one packet, four uh, D word data consume half memory compared to the AD, AD word. So it will be more friendly to the storage. Uh, as cost it provides as a cost, it will provide reduced informations, uh, not the full information uh, from the headers. The data field trace can be directly mapping to the PCIe specifications definition of TLP packet, which means the uh, traced data, the field in the traced data is uh, uh, definition is the same with the PCIe specifications. So for the 8D word format, it's totally the same, but for 4D word format, just part of the headers is reordered, uh, which means the field may not uh, uh, totally follow the orders of the definitions in the PCI spec, uh, but the definitions is, is the same to the PCI spec. So unlike, uh, luckily, users don't need to remember this. We make, uh, uh, we have uh, support the perf tools to help to decoding it. So just to use, uh, when we got uh, the trace data, uh, by the perf record command, we can also use the perf report command to do some decodings and display the data. Uh, the command is show uh, on the bottom and we'll get uh, the decoding and display by pop report on the right, uh, to, on the two right figures. Okay, one is full uh, D word data format and another is uh, 8D word data format. 
the raw data is stored as a binary blob by the proof tools, and uh, we can make it uh, more friendly to the human as a proof report tools. So, but uh, for now, currently, only, only a minimal decoding support is added as shown. It uh, may be more helpful to decode every field of headers according to the spec, uh, but it may take some more works, uh, which is currently done now. Uh, instead of using this, uh, users can also uh, try to decide to decode or handling the data by a custom script or uh, uh, tools by itself. If uh, if the provided the report to is not met his or uh, or her demand, so uh, another thing is about uh, DMA implementation of the PTT trees. Uh, the we have one uh, hardware compare uh, comparator in the PTT uh, device for the trace modular. So the PLP header tracing is implemented by the hardware wearing uh, and the hardware comparator. So merely very little overhead for this. Uh, addi uh, additionally, uh, we uh, deploy four uh, DMA buffers uh, for the PTD trace. Uh, act like a ring buffer uh, as shown in this uh, four buffers. The PLP headers will be stored in the buffers one by one then right back until the trace is over. When one buffer is full, it will notify the drivers by the interrupt uh, to consume it. The driver will com commit the buffer, uh, the traced data to the perf aux buffers, uh, which will finally be exported past to the users as the raw data. Uh, so uh, it is deliberately designed to have four uh, DMA buffers, which uh, each side of the DMA, the DMA buffer is greater than uh, four uh, megabytes, so we won't miss one packet even on the full request because uh, it is uh, calculated by the hardware guys that uh, uh, we need at least four megabytes DMA buffers with four thousand DMA buffers for not missing one data. So by this design, the tracing should be reliable and won't affect the traffic significantly, since uh, we have very uh, low overhead and uh, we won't miss one packet we'd like to trace. So another thing is about PTD is the tuning function. That uh, this, slide, uh, this slide shows how tuning is used, implemented, and how to prevent uh, corrupting the PCI traffic. Uh, the link event, uh, which is also called, uh, which, uh, okay, you can just uh, regard the link event as uh, PCS link configurations are uh, exported as uh, system, uh, CSFS attributes uh, shown in this uh, in the first column. Uh, currently, we support tuning the queues of the certain TLP packets, posted, non-posted, and the completions and the buffer level of certain directions, inbound or outbound. The usage is rather simple. You just, uh, if you want to know the current uh, uh, configurations, you just read the read from the CFS attribute uh, of the certain event you'd like to know. And uh, if you want to uh, change it, you just write one value to it. The value of the tune event is an um, exported to the users is an abstract level, like uh, zero for a low level of certain event and the two for a rather high level for certain event. Uh, the real uh, root complex the configurations are hidden behind the levels and the beside and read indirectly with the assistant of the IMU. IMU is means the uh, intelligent manager uh, manage unit, uh, which is mm, just like some co-processors uh, co on the SOC. So when the users set one event, the drivers do the necessary check and then set uh, the event and the data to the hardware reg registers. The hardware registers will signal, uh, will have an interrupt to notify the uh, interrupt, uh, uh, have an interrupt to notify the MU to do, to process the command. So then the MU will read a event and read a command. Then 
uh, try to map the the abstract level to the real uh, PCIe, uh, PCIe root complex the configurations and then do the config. Finally, when the configuration is done, uh, it will clear the interrupt status and notify the drivers. Uh, by this time, the driver is still pulling to the completions, pulling the interrupt status register. Uh, when, when the interrupt uh, is cleared, it knows that the configuration is done. It will read or read, uh, read the result or read the values and uh, notify the users. So with this DLM, we assume that the tuning will be safe and will prevent the random settings from the users to corrupt the PCS ink. Since uh, both the drivers and the users are not setting the uh, PCI uh, uh, root complex config uh, configurations directly, it, it is uh, doing this with the assistance of the uh, MU, uh, which is not uh, seen directly by the users. Uh, but now the, uh, we, we only provide the abilities to uh, tuning the PCI link. Kong, we can't hear you anymore. You probably have some transmission problem. Oh, you, yeah. Okay, can you hear me? Network is not yes. stable. Uh, uh, there's still, still some jitter, but we can hear you. And I think it's gone again, so yeah. We currently can't hear you. Hello. Now we can hear you. Yeah. yeah okay. But I can now to handle my slides. My uh, oh, one second. presenter. Ah, oh, okay. I can do it now. Okay, so the next part is that uh, potential uh, use scenarios we, we assume. So the, the we assume some potential use scenarios for our uh, monitoring and the tracing facilities. Uh, the first one, of course, is monitoring the link status and the utilizations for profiling the uh, link uh, status and uh, for some IO applications. Uh, another thing is about uh, tracing for validating mon uh, monitoring and the more uh some more detailed information compared to the PMU. Uh like uh, uh okay, seems I read okay. Uh do the tracing for the validating and monitoring for a quick and more convenient uh, uh method, uh like finding the hardware bugs, for example, out of order TLPs, uh track the access order and help debug the drivers, uh try to figure out whether to use uh whether the a command issues by the driver is uh, as expected, uh, whether we need a barrier or not, and also help to do the error locating and handling, complement to the AR, etc. Uh, since the AR only captures the headers which incur the error, but we can, by, uh, by using the PDD trace, uh, we can also trace the 
context uh, before and after this error packet. Another thing is about tuning the PCIe performance. Uh, try to tune the PCIe link performance according to the monitoring and uh, all the tracing stati uh, stati uh, statistics. So if for one certain IO applications, uh, if the users already know the pattern, then just to tune it directly. For example, for certain cases where uh, where there are a lot of uh, completion packets, uh, try to increase the completion weight, uh, completion packets weight of the buffer on the link. Uh, another, uh, otherwise, uh, in most cases that uh, the people may not know the patterns of certain IO applications, then try to monitor the link stat uh, statistics and tune accordingly. Uh, like uh, by either PMU or PPP, or using both to try to profiling the application's pattern, figure out the TLP portions or the composition of each type, direction, and monitoring the buffer utilizations, then try to tune, uh, tune the corresponding configurations on the PCIe link, and then monitor it to see whether it uh, meets your expectation. So uh, here I give one. Uh, examples uh, how to tune the PCI link combined with PMU and the PPP. So this says is an examples and uh, how can it can re resolve. So uh, I use a rather simple application here, copy a uh, uh, full megabyte data to a remote server through a PCI network card. And uh, how can we uh, try to tune this? Uh, first, I, I try to monitor in the IO applications, monitor the link buffer allocation status, we monitor the counts of how many times the buffer is successfully uh, allocated to each direction as shown in this uh, um, perf state command. The uh, event code knife for the inbound buffer allocations and the event code 109 for transmit buffer allocations. Uh, from the perf uh, statistic, we can see that in the situations the successful count of the uh, trans, uh, okay the outbound uh, direction is a bit low compared to the inbound directions. So then, uh, when, when I got this information, I use it as a feedback to uh, tune the link event. So I tune the link event by directly writing uh, to a rather high level to the T, uh, TX allocation buffer level. The buffer allocation level for the outbound uh, so the higher, the more likely to get the buffer and uh, redo the remote copy. Uh, after tuning, we can see that the counts of the outbound uh, access, uh, outbound uh, buffer allocation uh, increased. Previously, we, we only have 6,000, but uh, after the tuning, we have uh, around 7,600. Uh, the count uh, increased apparently. So, in this, uh, so this is a, a very simple. Uh, example to show that uh, our concept uh, conception of tuning the PCIe performance by uh, use of both uh, PMU and PPP. In this is example, we see the link activity changed after changing the configurations. Uh, but uh, uh, something uh, to know that uh, uh, this isn't a guide for now that tuning certain configurations can get the performance improvement. Um, it is because that uh, the real cases are complicated and involves many aspects. A single point may not uh, help, so it's better for the users to profiling and the tuning repeatedly until you achieve the expected result. So last, uh, finally, I got some open questions for uh, this uh, facilities introduced. Uh, I'd like to discuss and willing to hear that uh, your feedbacks and uh, suggestions. The first one is that we really need some feedbacks for the design usage and our future plans, what we want and uh, what will be more helpful to make this more uh, to make this more helpful. Since we are, I don't think we have found that uh, some similar uh, technologies and uh, uh, devices like this, uh, we bring it, uh, I think we bring it in the first time. So. Have a look at the chat. Uh, there were some questions that um, people were, were discussing when you were presenting. Okay. I'm just, I'm just wondering, uh, this is very specific to your performance monitor hardware. 
is it possible to expand this to pull this information from PCIe switches and other facilities that are already available within systems? Oh, okay. Currently, it is uh, very specific to the SOC. Yeah, it is re implemented in, in our SOC, but uh, uh, like, uh, and, uh, I write here that uh, for the open question that uh, is it possible for more platforms and devices uh, to expand this to other cases, not for uh, SOC only. Uh, like we have something, we have PMU or PTD for a switch, which is uh, which can be plugged in, and uh, for some for a network card that can be plugged in. Uh, we already have PMUs for the for our Hacinicos HNS3 network card, but it's rather specific to the vendors uh, who will provide this uh, facilities. Uh, for now. Uh, we only implemented in the controller side of our SOC, so uh, cannot be found. Oh, there are a few. Sorry. Hey, you go. Uh, there are a few exceptions. So CXL has a standards defined stuff for this. Unfortunately, not yet from PCI. Um, there are obviously are switches out there that do. I've not seen anyone do tracing, but they might. I mean, it may not be documented. Um, but there are definitely documented PMUs out there um, for a number of different switch vendors. And it would be great. Usually they have weird and wonderful user space tooling. And it would be great to try and pull it into the framework. Um, ideally get them involved in it. Um, but I mean, it's kind of the nature of perf stuff is you, you tend to share the what it looks like in user space and everything under the hood is different for a vendor. So if we could get towards that, it would be helpful. And obviously, beat up your favorite PCI SIG representatives if you want anything standardized. Yeah, I want. So, uh, like, uh, if we if we, uh, if we have one specification for this, like a CXL PMU, uh, we are more likely to extend it and uh, get uh, more vendors involved. So I mentioned that here. Uh, I think uh, similarly to the C CXL PMU, uh, we can. Imagine something like uh, the specification for the uh, PCIC PMU and uh, also for the TRIS facilities, uh, but it's um, TRIS is more, I think it's more challenging that uh, different vendors may have different uh, implementations. But uh, yeah, I think uh, for the PMU, it is more uh, likely to be possible. Yeah. Also, uh, besides of the hardware specifications, we can imagine something like a software frameworks with if we have more and more uh, vendors found this useful and get involved in this and uh, provide this facilities embedded in their uh, either a controller uh, switch or in their uh, independent endpoint uh, uh, car. Yeah. I mean, if, if anyone is interested in standardization and wants to reach out to me, I can probably at least find the right people um, and build some connections on that. So that's Jonathan Cameron speaking. Or, or reach out through Yikong, he can get hold of me. Okay, one question. Uh, that is. Uh... You mentioned that uh, tracing for the CXL, so the for the current CXL implementations, I think they share the uh, some of the uh, link uh, physical link uh, with uh, PCIe. So currently, we only uh, in our implementation uh, implementations of the PTD, we only tracing the PLP packets, which is uh, some kind very specific uh, specific to the. Uh, PCA stuff. If we extend this to the some lower uh, layers like the DLPs or even lower, we may have a chance to also. I think we. Oh, is it possible for us to have a chance to also trace the uh, uh, CXL uh, transactions? Yeah, I think that would be possible. Yeah, it's doable, but it's 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 again it's a custom. It would be the high silicon version of it. Um, what would be interesting would be at least to look at things like standardizing the trace format um, so that if it's dumped by entirely different hardware, at least the fields are in the same order, um, or exactly what is logged. That would be very helpful. Anyhow, I think given uh, Jörg is looming, 
that we <laughs> you may have something to say about being out of time. Yeah, I, I think it's time to wrap um, the discussion up. It was very interesting. Thanks, uh, Yikong. Um, and with that, we've also reached the end of our microconference. I want to thank all uh, participants and all speakers, either in person or also our remote attendees. I think it was a great event. And uh, see you on the conference or online. And um, yeah, have a nice rest of the conference. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Jörg, for facilitating as well.